Parasitism is a non-mutual relationship between living things from different species where one organism, a parasite, uses the other for its survival, while damning the second organism, the host. There are organisms that depend on other species, often more than one, to reproduce and continue its life cycle. Parasites are not predators, however, for they are much smaller than their hosts and are highly specific to which kind of animal they choose as their host. They also reproduce at much faster speed than their hosts, for they reproduce asexually, cloning themselves rather than mating. The genus Leucochloridium is a group of parasitic worms, but within this genus there is a specific species which manipulates its host in an incredible way. Leucochloridium paradoxum, or more commonly known as Queen banded brusac, uses snails as a means of attracting birds as to carry on its species. It turns its hosts into a zombie snail. How is the parasite detected in the first place? The Leucochloridium paradoxum parasite is incredibly small, too small for the human eye to see. Considering that they spend time inside a small snail, one can only imagine their size. So how on earth did someone figure out it was there in the first place? Where did it come from? Could it be possible that it had always been there? Or maybe the infected snails had developed a severely harmful mutation. The parasite was discovered over 200 years ago, when Carl Gustav Kaurus, a German physiologist and painter during the Romantic era, reported seeing a Cooper engraving of unknown origin and age that depicted a snail that exhibited the signs of what we now recognize as infection from L. He then went on to describe the parasite in 1835. For some time it was suggested that these sporocysts were the result of spontaneous generation, an obsolete theory of Aristotle that suggested that living organisms could come from non-living matter. It was thought that fleas could come from dust and that maggots arose from dead flesh. This is obviously not the case. Fleas do in fact come from other fleas, and likewise with maggots. It is understandable, however, that one might think that parasites come out of nowhere due to their ability to go completely unnoticed and the idea of one organism going from host to host is quite bizarre. In 1853, it was suggested that Leucochloridium paradoxum in snails might attract avian predators, a surprising suggestion for the first understanding termitoid, parasitic flatworms that have external suckers for attaching to a host, life cycles that wasn't until 1881, though the termitoid itself had been recognized in 1379. Why snails? Why snails? How long did Leucochridium paradoxum evolve to depend on snails of all things to survive? How do Leucochridium paradoxum then attract birds for the final stage of their life cycle? Parasites depend on hosts for survival, feeding off them for nutrients in order to reproduce as well as a habitat for their larvae to develop. Leucochloridium is a type of fluke parasite, which are digenetic termitodes, meaning they are parasitic flatworms that have external suckers for attaching to a host that require two hosts to complete their life cycle. During their evolution, they were forced to adapt, for their host adapted to living on land rather than water. Their genetic ancestor was a parasite of aquatic snails, causing them to use land snails for their adaptation. This adaptation from water to land is the reason behind their present life cycle, for in while living underwater, they could migrate from host to host using water as a transfer medium, but without it they were forced to use different modes of transportation. They used the land snails for the first two stages of their larval development. The eggs hatch into two fecund larval stages in the snail, but then came the issue of getting the larvae to the next host who would help continue their life cycle. The parasite evolved to manipulate the cells of snails. They appear to divide in an uncontrolled way, like that of cancer cells, but no tumor is produced. Instead, the growth becomes the mother and daughter sporocysts. Originally, the daughter sporocysts would give birth to hundreds of infectious swimmers called cursariae, meaning larvae that are free swimming that can go from one host to the next. In pre-land times, these swimmers would enter a minoa frog and wait to be eaten, but now water is no longer part of the equation. So, when the daughter sporocyst fills with infective cursariae, like before it instead morphs into a disease like intruder and fills the host's liver and body cavity. A branch of the growth then grows toward the snail's head and penetrates the snail's antennae. It fills it with cercariae, distending it. The result is the antennae resembling caterpillars or maggots, and pulsate causing them to look like they are in fact alive insects. Attracted by the signals of what they think is their prey, the birds eat the zombie snail, and with a hundred of infective leucochloridium paradoxum, which will then fully develop inside the bird and reproduce. The next generation will then be carried out in the waste of the bird, which then is eaten by the snails and the cycle continues again and again. This unique form of manipulation between the parasite and its host is known as aggressive mimicry. Aggressive mimicry is when parasites or predators share similarities with their victims. This allows them to avoid being correctly identified, or makes it possible to trick their prey or next host to come to them, unknowingly helping them continue their life cycle. They usually lure in their desired prey or host by mimicking food or the possibility of reproduction, essentially falsely flaunting the necessary means of survival.